So I tried to, I, I, I tried to hint at this. Um, <laughs> let's see. I didn't hint very strongly. Take the step this way. Um, there's a pressure at point A, right? Well, what do you think the pressure at, how, do you, how much different do you think the pressure at point C is than the pressure at point A, given that they are right next to each other or maybe even the same point? Um, point A and point C are right next to each other. There's no reason for the pressure to be different. Even if it is a little bit different because of the height, uh, point B and point D are right next to each other. And so there's no reason for them to be different, different pressures, except maybe the height. And if the heights are different there, they're equally different there. And so the difference in those two pressures at this point would be the same as the difference in those two. And so if, these, if B and D are the same pressure as A and C, this is what I wanted you to, to, do, to answer, oddly enough. That's what I was looking for. That the way it is set up forces the pressure, whatever's, whatever pressure is out here, pressure coming out, it doesn't change along this giant pipe because there's essentially no resistance to that giant pipe. So that pressure P out is basically this pressure right here. And that pressure P in is basically this pressure right here. So P out minus P in is, also, is equal to delta P1 and is equal to delta P2. Those are all three basically the same pressure difference. So I, I know you haven't seen something like this before, but I, I did my best to hint at it without actually saying it. Um, the pressure difference across those two pipes because of the way they're connected, has to be basically the same. In fact, I could say it's exactly the same if I connected them right. So that's what I was looking for. Um, again, this is a much smaller, much uh, smaller cross-section pipe, so I would expect that to have the higher resistance. I wouldn't expect R1 and R2 to be equal. Um, so the, if the resistances are different, but the pressure drops are the same, then it's going to turn out that the currents are different. I could say, think of these, again, let's go back to the straws. Think of those as two straws. Put them in your mouth side by side. Which one are you going to pull more water through? The big one that's sitting there or the small one that's sitting there while you're trying to drink through them? You're going to pull a lot of water through the small one, the current's going to, sorry, through the big one because its resistance is small. So the current through that straw is going to be big and the current through the small straw is going to be small. It's not going to affect how much water gets into your mouth nearly as much as the big straw is. So the currents aren't going to be the same, but the pressures are, so what I was looking for there was B, Any questions about that one? I know it's the first time you've seen anything like this, but yeah. When you talk about current in this problem, do you mean like the energy change into the low energy? So the question I, is, when I talk about current in this problem, what do I mean? Um, current is, is always amount of fluid flowing. How much the current is the volume? It's a cubic meters per second. It's the amount, how much fluid every second goes across that, not goes across that, but flows past any one point there. So if these were two straws hooked up to your mouth and your mouth was right here, how much fluid per second, the volume per second from this little pipe and the volume per second from the big pipe shows up in your mouth? So current is the amount of stuff flowing when you're talking about fluids. It's always the amount of stuff, but when you're talking about fluids, we measure an amount in volume, and when you talk about electrical charge, we measure the amount in, in coulombs. 
Any other questions about this one? We will see electrical circuits like this, and that's why I wanted to ask you this question. Yeah? Did you mention something like um, in the same system, the current always going to be the same? In the same system, the current's always going to be the same. Um, what I said was that the current into some point is equal to the current out. So the current that goes down here is going to split into two pieces. So whatever that current is will be equal to I2 plus I1. The total current around this pipe will split into two, so that will be equal to I2 plus I1. The current right here, because there's no other place for it to go, is the same as the current right there. At different parts of that one of number one, at different sections of number one, whoops, uh, have the same current. Different sections of number two have the same current, but they don't have the same current as, as each other. I1 doesn't have to be equal to I2, but I1 plus I2 does have to be equal to the total current that's going around this whole thing. So the current that the pump pushes out gets split into two unequal pieces, a small piece through, of current through I1 and a, and a much bigger flow rate through I2. And then it comes back together again, and then it's the total current again. At least that's one way of describing what's going on there. Any other questions? So this is basically, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'd rather you think about it. What I want to do is say that steady state electrical circuits and Almost any electrical circuit is in a steady state. If you plug in the pump in the other room and, you, and water flows through in the, in the discussion lab, water flows through, and then water goes up those standpipes, it takes maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds for it to get to a steady state where things stop changing with time. When you plug in an electrical, plug a wire into an electrical outlet, often, Things stop changing with time in something like nanoseconds. The steady state is reached very, very quickly in electrical circuits. When I push this button right away, uh, that light shows up on the screen. It takes almost no time to get to steady state. So steady state electrical circuits, well, almost every electrical circuit is, 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 a, is a really fast steady state. Um, we have two ideas, the same two ideas. Matter is conserved, so whatever electrical current goes into some point is the same as the electrical current that goes out of that point. Energy is conserved. And I'm going to write the, well, this just says something we've already talked about. The current here has to equal the current there because there's no other connections. By the way, these are this is a, a picture of a resistor. In, in electrical circuits, you generally do something like what I did back here. Let me step back and say something here. Um, I said that these pipes are, are really big. This pipe here, that pipe there, and this section right there. Really big cross-sectional areas, so almost no resistance, negligible resistance. So if I look at this pipe, I would say no resistance, no resistance, no resistance, small resistance, no resistance, big resistance, and then no resistance again. Just because of the size of the pipe. Same thing is true for electrical circuits. There are places where there will be resistance. We put it in on purpose. We call that little thing we stick in there a resistor. And we connect it to other wi with other wires to other things. And those other wires are big enough cross-section that we get to ignore the resistance and say the resistance is zero. It isn't zero, but it's really, really small. That other resistance only becomes important if we remove the big resistors. If all you have is a bare wire and a battery, and you take that bare wire and you connect it across the ends of the battery and hold it there with your hands, you will burn your fingers because 
that bare wire has a really small resistance. So gigantic currents are going to flow, and uh, that's going to heat things up. And you might ruin the battery. You'll probably burn your fingers. Um, so, so don't do that. But that's the assumption we're going to make. Bare wires, zero resistance, approximately. Negligible, at least. Resistors, not zero resistance. So bare wire here, a resistor there, bare wire that splits into two pieces. This has no resistance. Then these sections do have a resistance. And so here's our cu current conservation. Just like I said before, whatever current comes in gets split into two pieces. No reason to think that they're equal size pieces necessarily. 